Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hi, everybody. It's the Growing in Grace podcast. I'm Joel Brzezinski with Mike Kapler, our weekly dive into the grace of God. We've been talking a lot, Mr. Kapler, about our identity in Christ, our solid identity that we have in him. It's something that I think that as a as a body, we need to build each other up in this and encourage each other in these things and and remind each other of these things because you know, things go on in life, things happen and maybe we feel like we haven't performed very well or maybe we we're just unsure of of where we stand with God based upon what we're doing or not doing. And the reality is, is that all of these things that we've been talking about for the last several weeks, our born identity, we've received these things by birth, not by what we do. We want to make that absolutely clear. And hopefully, again, as a body, as the body of Christ, to continue to build each other up in these things. And so we've got a little bit more here today to talk about on our born identity, and we'll see what happens. How's things with you there, Mr. Cap? It's fine, Joel. Everything's good. I, you know, when I, the more I think about this, and sometimes I get lost in thought on it, almost like I'm in another dimension, um, <laughs> not the Twilight Zone. <laughs> That's where I came from. <laughs> I came from the the legalistic Twilight Zone. But I, I think that this thing that we know as as grace, it's silly for us to think that we can somehow just treat it as if it were a Bible topic as mm-hmm. if it was something that we could refer to from time to time or when it was needed or you know a special study of some kind on the subject of grace versus other bible topics you can't really have a new covenant gospel without grace being a part of the entire thing i mean it's everything just revolves around this you you can't separate what we consider to be bible topics for the Christian religion and and somehow leave grace over there somewhere or filter it in and you know a little at a time it, it would be like trying to say that uh I, I mean it, it's, it's like our globe Joel I mean grace is our globe just like the earth is is uh something that we're living on it's it's a planet we can't really get away from it and survive for any length of time and and that's how it is with grace and these things we've been talking about with our identity in Jesus Christ again the the foundation the core the the gifting of it, it it's all coming from a source of grace with a capital G the person of Jesus Christ. And this week we want to talk, uh, as we've been doing for many weeks now, trying to just pick some main core things that identify, that already identify who we are in Jesus Christ. And this week, one of those things is that we are heirs, H-E-I-R. We have an inheritance. And we'll take a few minutes with that this week. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like an heir head, but that's just me (laughs) when I can't think of things that are supposed to be there and more and more as life goes on here on planet earth but we are indeed heirs john talks about in the book of john chapter one talking about jesus he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him he came to his own and his own did not receive him but as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we were born of God. You know, we're talking about our born identity. This is key right here. We're children of God, not because of our works, not because of the works of the flesh, not even because of our own will, but it says, as many as received him, To them, he gave the right to become children of God, and we became children again of God. We were born of God. That's our inheritance. That's who we are. We're sons. We're children. We're children of God, not because of anything we've done, but because we've received him. By by his grace, 
Through faith, we've simply believed and we have received everything that he has freely given. And that means that we are heirs. Paul talks about us being heirs and co-heirs or joint heirs with Christ in Romans 8, 17. We are heirs. And it says a verse that I love sharing, a passage from Titus, Titus 3. It talks about the kindness and the love of God our Savior appearing not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly or generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. It's all by his grace through faith not because of our works, apart from our works, and it's when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared. That's what it's really about, his kindness, his goodness, and not our attempts at, uh, at being good. And that's the bottom line. I mean, that, that's what a child is. I mean, you, can't, you don't earn childhood into a family. Some would say, well, you, you can't pick your parents. No, you, in, in a sense, uh, your parents kind of picked you. And that's kind of what God said, you know, it wasn't so much that uh, you chose me, but I chose you. And uh, that, that's the position we're at with a child who is an heir, who has received an inheritance that doesn't come through what we do. It doesn't come through trying to earn it or work for it. Romans 4.13, that promise to Abraham, to his descendants, that he would be heir of the world was not through the law, through works, but through the righteousness of faith. And Galatians chapter 4, starting with, with verse 1, I should go back just to finish off uh, Galatians chapter 3 here before we jump into this. But Paul was wrapping up a major point back in, in Galatians chapter 3, but he, he said this at the end. He said, if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed or offspring and heirs according to what? To promise this is also talked about in Hebrews as well, this thing about promise. And then Paul went on to say this. I mean that he says, I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave. Though he is the owner of everything, technically speaking, he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children or as sons. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So, verse 7 of Galatians 4, so you are no longer a slave, but a son or a child. And if a child than an heir through God. So this inheritance we received, and again, Hebrews talks about this in several places, but it was received when Christ died. And when Christ died, the ability for us to inherit was enacted, it was initiated. And this is where we're at now as children. You, whether you were somebody who was adopted into a family, born into a family, as a child of that family, you just couldn't unchild yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you still had mom and dad. Even if you were going to run away, you were still their child, whether it was through birth or through a legal process. The point is, that you are gifted with this. It's, it's just something that has occurred and you, you can't earn it and you can't lose it. Right. And that's because it's eternal. You know, we have received not temporary life, but we've received eternal life. And here is something that, that, that speaks to that. You know, Paul in Ephesians talking about this inheritance in him. Also, we have obtained an inheritance He's talking in, in Ephesians 1. He says, In him you also trusted, because he had first talked about himself and some others who had trusted, in him you also trusted, talking to the Ephesians, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the good news of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And that's a seal that can't be broken. 
uh, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. That's something we can bank on right there and then. We've received, again, not temporary life, not just, uh, well, you've received an inheritance, you've received life until you mess up, until you do something bad, until something happens that I just don't want to claim you as my child anymore. No, this is eternal life. You see, eternal life is forever. <laughs> so we can't we can't do anything to mess this up. You know, Jesus said that no one would be able to pluck us from his hands. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Remember that promise that we've talked about so many times on this podcast from Hebrews, the promise, the oath that God made to himself. That is what all of this is based upon. And so we are sons, we're heirs, we're co-heirs, we have an inheritance, we're born anew. We have new life, and it's all through what God has done for us. Well, I think life ties into this, Joel. I mean, uh, the, the life of Christ now in us as children of God. I mean, th this is such an incredible thing. This thing that we have in Jesus Christ, I, I just watched so many Christians, and I was one of them for many years. I just watched so many Christians struggle with wondering where they stand with God, you know, wondering if they're really loved or forgiven or accepted. Is what they're doing enough? You know? <laughs> and how much is, is enough, by the way? And, and, and this is the thing that people struggle with all the time, though, is not understanding this born identity, born into Christ, born uh, into God. Uh, yes, we have natural parents, but Spiritually speaking, this is the position that we're at now as believers in Jesus Christ. It's raised up with Jesus. It's as, it's as if we're on, I'm not saying that we're gods or anything like that. I'm just saying it's as if we've been lifted up on this plateau, a place that we didn't deserve by our own merit. That's where grace comes in again. It's, it's all based on what God has done for us on our behalf through his son, Jesus Christ. And it's always going to be that. If we're on the merit system, <laughs> getting uh, grades on A, B, C, D, F, and I always wondered why they skipped E, uh, I just <laughs> wonder, you know, where, where are we going to go with that? How, how perfect are you going to have to be in your behavior and in your performance? It just is never going to be enough. You are a child and that is enough. God's love for you is unconditional, and we can rest in that. Yes, indeed. That is something we can rest in. And with that, that wraps up about 10 weeks of us talking about our born identity, the true identity that we have in Christ, the factual identity that we have in him, apart from anything that we do, apart from our works. It's his gift to us, our identity in him. Moving on from that then to next week, we'll start talking a little bit about mixing law and grace. <laughs> the dangers of mixing law and grace. We'll spend at least a week or two, maybe more, on that starting next week right here on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.